is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. This is a new day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. It's life in football. We are life in football. You are now listening to the Life in Football podcast. Check out the new website, lifeinfootball.com. Once again, the website is lifeinfootball.com. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Life in Football podcast, baby. I'm your host, Mike B. And this is Coles Cole and Moore. You know, we love life and enjoying football. We got a top notch coach who was a top-notch athlete. I'm talking about, man, this is amazing. We got a coach who was a player. Y'all know I love this. But guess what? He was good in football and basketball. And I'm telling y'all, he was not just okay. He was amazing. And he was a top-notch, top-tier player when he was in high school. I'm talking about first-team All-State. He got a scholarship in basketball. He had scholarships in football. What I'm saying, we have an amazing coach by the name of Nick Hill. That's right, Nick Hill. He's currently the head coach for Southern Illinois University. And one thing about it, if you haven't looked them up, you need to ASAP. They got a beautiful stadium, a beautiful field. And y'all know, last year, they gave North Dakota State a real good run. I, I actually watched the whole film yesterday. They gave them a real good run. I'm telling y'all, with that wildcat they was out there running, it was almost <laughs> game over for North Dakota State. I wish they would have beat them. Not, I, I ain't hating on North Dakota State, but I kind of wish they would have won, you know, because they done had a run for so long now. But Coach Nick Hill, man, he's an amazing coach. When I say he had pro experience, he got pro experience from all over, from the NFL to arena football. And he also played at Southern Illinois as well, man. So y'all sit back, relax, and listen to this great interview that we're about to have with Coach Nick Hill of SIU. But without further ado, Simo, bring him on. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing great, man. I, I'm excited to, to be on here. I uh, Life and football talking sports man it, it doesn't it doesn't get much better hey it don't and we definitely glad to have you on coach we truly glad to have you on well i'm happy to be here now coach i want to jump right out of the gate how did you know that you want to be a coach like when did you know like hey this is what i want to do for my life you know i i knew pretty pretty early on that I, I wanted to coach. Um, you know, I, I probably, once I got into high school, I, uh, you know, you, when you start kind of, kind of putting thought to what you want to do in, in life, you, I wanted to be a teacher. I mean, whenever I, I first in, enrolled in college, I knew I wanted to get into education and uh, become a teacher. That way I could be a high school coach. You just see all your coaches are usually um, high school teachers. So I, I wanted to get in the classroom. So I did all of that. And when I was in, uh, when I was in high school, I do all the observing classes and I actually got my, ed my, my degree in education or, um, elementary education and special ed. So I currently could teach in high school in Illinois, K through 12 in the special ed classroom. And it was just something about that. That's the one thing that, uh, who knows, you never know where life takes you that, one day find yourself back in the classroom, but I, I truly enjoyed the classroom part of student teaching and, and um, that. So I knew that I wanted to coach. I didn't know what level, probably the college level didn't really happen until really 2014 when I became a college coach. Um, I was a high school coach for really uh, four years and uh, then I kind of, it just kind of happened that I, I was offered a job in college and, and now here I am in 2020 going into my fifth season as the head coach. And uh, so I'm very fortunate. I'm, I'm blessed that I'm here. That's the way the life goes a lot of times is that, uh, 
you know, you got to put yourself in good situations by just working hard and following your heart and praying about different decisions and life steers you in all different directions. And so I'm definitely um, blessed to be where I'm at. Coach, you surely are because on top of that, it, the blessing is you had already started seeing what you wanted to do while in high school. A lot of players don't, Coach. We, Me as a former player, I was so lost when I got out of school, didn't have no clue what I wanted to do. And it's a blessing that God had already started setting little nuggets in your mind like, okay, this is what you could do, this is what you could do, and everything, like you said, looked like it fell right in place for you. Yeah, there's there's no doubt. I, I and and that's okay. That's what I tell our players all the time. I, I've really challenged them, especially the older guys, our leadership council, um, during this time, during this COVID nineteen, is to really push yourself as far as like thinking. It, it doesn't have to be you have to be dead set on one one thing, but there's a lot of things that um, that you you know, you can think about reach out to those people. Who are those people that, that you've always wanted to reach out to that, that it may be something that you want to do because football is going to end at some point, whether you, whether you like it or not. And, um, and so that, that's what we've talked to our guys about is, uh, is doing that reaching out and, and it's okay not to know. Sometimes you don't know and, and that's okay. And, you know, for, for me, uh, you know, you're like, you just have to follow your heart. You know, if it wasn't, I wouldn't be standing here if I wouldn't have in 2000 and, um, in 2009, I went and played AF2 football for $200 a week. And if you won, you got a $50 win bonus in McAllen, Texas. And a lot of people, you know, I had my teaching degree and everybody's like, well, it's time to start teaching. It's time to start, uh, moving on and, and with your career and, doing this. And I was just like, I don't have the bug of playing out yet. So I'm going to just go take a chance. I'm going to go down here and that allowed me to further my career and do some things. And, um, you know, I, that's what I, I tell our guys. It's okay not to know. You're right. You're right. Now coach, how from once you got into coaching coach four years at the high school level, then got into coaching at the college level, when did it click in your mind? Or like you said, you might have caught some nuggets early on. When did it, you know that you wanted to be the head coach at the college level? Again, and just for my situation, it just kind of happened. In 2014, I was the quarterback coach here at Southern. And then in 2015, I was the offensive coordinator. And then in 2016, I was I was the head coach. Now, in 2015, we didn't we didn't have a, a great year wins and loss record wise. We had a good year on offense, but um, didn't expect the head coach to get let go. We were out recruiting. Got he got let go. The the way that college football is right now, you just you just never know. And then they named me the interim head coach in the meantime. And so for about a month, I was the interim head coach. We weren't on the road recruiting. They were doing a national search. There was five finalists. I was able to become get an interview. And then I was able to uh, to get the job. And so really, I, you know, going into that recruiting season, I was still just trying to figure out how to be a, a great assistant coach. And so it usually doesn't ha happen that way. That's when I, I say I, I am very fortunate and blessed with, a, with an uh, unbelievable opportunity. And um, so really, I, I don't know if I, if I had my mind wrapped around it whenever it happened, to be honest with you. Coach, now, for us with you um, coaching, like, how does it feel to be, you know, the head guy at your alma mater and, you know, dealing with guys like who you used to play with? Like, do you invite them up? And, how, like I say, how is it playing at your alma mater? Oh, yeah, and I'm from here, too. So I, I grew up in southern Illinois. So my parents still live here. My brother, My brother played quarterback here. Uh, my wife played volleyball here. That's how we met. Um, so it, it's a, uh, it just means a lot more to me here. Just, uh, I mean, I was the head high school coach at Carbondale high school where our university is. So uh, my, my feelings for this area, there's no place I'd rather live in, in the country. And so uh, this place means a ton to me. So I, of course, I mean, the alumni know that, I mean, it's uh, it means something to me to be a Saluki, and we try to to do everything we can 
to make them feel special, welcome them back. Uh, and, and the main thing is make them proud. And that's what we try to, to you know, put with our, our current team is that one day you will be the guy that comes back in 15 years and who's wearing my number. And we talk about better, you know, better people make better Salukis and about leaving that jersey in a better place. And, uh, you know, no matter what, if you're number 29, well, one day you'll come back with your kids and you'll be like, well, I used to wear number 29. You'll want to know who that kid is. And you'll want to – you you might not really care what, you know, his stats are or know who he is, but I promise you, you want to see him playing hard and respecting the game and having a great attitude on the sideline when you're showing your kids who it is. And uh, so we try to we try to instill that in our current players right now. Coach, I was looking at some film – and I noticed that, you know, now y'all have some top-notch football in y'all conference, in the Missouri Valley Conference. Formerly, it used to be the Gateway Conference. But I love what I saw on film. And when y'all was playing against North Dakota State, man, the defense was hitting. Offense moving off the ball. It's, it's like I saw a realistic chance of – the two games I actually watched two games. Y'all I felt y'all could have almost went undefeated last year. Like how you feel about last season? Yeah, I felt like it we had we had a really good team. I mean, I, I felt like we uh you know was a top fifteen team in the country. Um I'm not just saying that, but you know, we lost two games we lost, you know, one get close game to Arkansas State. We beat UMass. And then our other three losses came to top five, top um, top ten teams: um, South Dakota State, North Dakota State, and Illinois State. And so, um, you know, it, it uh, we got to win those close games. Uh, I know you mentioned North Dakota State in the last game, and we've went back and rewatched that game just like we do all the other games, and you know, break it down and see where we can improve and where we got to get better and. And uh, we should have closed out a couple of those drives. We didn't. And obviously, credit to them. They're a tough team to, to score on. But, you know, we left the ball at the half the half yard line in the fourth quarter to make it a one-score game. And, we, you know, the opening drive of the, the second half, we took down the field and had a big penalty and a mis, miscommunication on third down, missed a field goal. And, and so uh, – but, yeah, I, I felt like, you know, we had the number one FCS player in the country who's the highest draft pick out of the FCS, Jeremy Chin, in the second round at safety. And, you know, our freshman All-American at, at Wildcat was tough to stop down there, down, down the stretch. And uh, this is a big physical back. We, had, we got players really at, at every position. And I'm excited. We, we lost a couple of really good players. But so does every great program every single year. And there's got to be a, the, the test of a, a good team, a good program, is that you just don't do it one time. And, and we're not even close to doing what we want to do in this program. But I do feel like this last team kind of set the bar of where we can be. Cool. I see, Coach. I, I like that, Coach, because where y'all headed at, it's no stopping y'all. And then – I see. I I love how y'all we get y'all get players. Well, everybody come to Florida, but y'all get players like right here in the Central Florida area, and that's how, that's my area. And we definitely have some playmakers here, Coach. And I see y'all have scooped some of those guys up too. Yeah, no doubt. No, I. Uh, so that's where I, I lived. I, I played for the Orlando Predators for two seasons, and then uh, and then I played for the Tampa Bay Storm for one season. So. I uh, and my wife taught there at Windermere Prep School. We lived out in Winter Garden. And so I, my first coaching gig was at Dr. Phillips High School, and then I was the offensive coordinator at West Orange. So I, uh, I've always, you know, had a passion for kids from Florida and, and those kids that I – and then the coaching community so tight. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of connections that I have are in that area. And so we've got a lot of great kids on our team from Florida and especially right there in the central Florida. At one point we had five kids from, from Jones high school on our team at the same time. Now coach, when I was watching the film, I noticed y'all utilize the, the two games I watched, y'all utilize that wildcat quite a bit, but it was working almost to perfection. Was that the plan before the season started? Or, you know, it just kind of came along during the season? No, it's um, 
you know, we've always knew that Javon was a, was a super talented kid and really it was a bad coaching job of the first game of the season. We, we didn't use a lot. He scored two touchdowns or one touchdown, but he, um, he didn't touch the ball enough. And so that very next day that I told the team that that is, that's a bad coach, my fault. And uh, we went to UMass the, the next, uh, the next week with really our backs against the wall, playing an FBS opponent, knowing that we got back-to-back FCS games coming up. And, and so we had a tough schedule and uh, we had to get Javon involved. And that's really where he his coming out party had a huge game uh, at UMass. And then we just kept trying to evolve as much as we could obviously you want to get good at what you do and and so a lot of different formations and things that you can do with that and the the thing that made it tough is that he could complete the the ball throwing the ball uh just a, just enough i mean really he's probably got the strongest arm on our team uh and so you know western illinois dropped back and and hit a post and uh did some different things because he was a high school quarterback so that makes it even tougher to defend well, Coach, man, I just want to say thank you for being on this podcast today. And I'm going to go ahead and open the floor up to you to promote anything you guys may have coming up in the future or, uh, you know, what you looking at for the season, when the season may start, when y'all start may, may start back working out or whatever the case may be, the floor is yours. No, I, I, I don't have much. I, I mean, I really appreciate you, you having me on. I mean, I, I think any time that we can – sit around and talk, especially in these times where, you know, you got to really pick and choose what you let come into your brain. You know, if you want to just get on and find a bunch of negative things, you can do that, whether it's politics or the COVID-19 or the situation we're in. And I told our team, and we're going to remain positive and we're going to look at the, the, um, the, the positive things that can come out of this. I really feel like we can all become recharged. We can really take a, a great, you know, look at our lives on things that we can probably streamline and become better at, whether it's our family, our marriage, uh, as coaches, uh, relationships. Uh, So, you know, it's been a, it's been a tough time, but also a good time in my life. And so um, I'm excited to get back. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to just see the guys, see the team and uh, whatever that looks like. um, Obviously there's going to be some new things this this year that make it more difficult. But when I say the more difficult, we've all got to adjust and adapt and whatever they give us football wise, we'll be happy with. I don't know anybody that even makes those decisions. So we'll listen to whoever tells us what we can do and we'll be ready to go when we can. Thank you, coach. And y'all heard it right here, man. That's coach Nick Hill for Southern Illinois university. And I'm telling y'all, if you haven't checked their school out, go look it up, man. Nice facility, beautiful field, beautiful stadium, and they went on the armor looking clean out there. I'm telling you, if I was a recruit coming out, I'd give them a great chance to get my services because they have something they can offer for as a coach who played and they has like like I said, the nice facilities and. Get in contact with him, man. Coach Nick Hill and Southern Illinois University. Get in contact with their school. Not if you know second string and you way down there on the bottom of the depth chart. I'm talking about if you're a dog and you're a bowler and you're looking for a chance and an opportunity to play some college football. I'm telling you, there's a place. This is a team that I know that's going to be in the um, playoffs this upcoming football season. And it's a team that I would love to be a part of. So I'm going to leave y'all like I always leave y'all. Keep your head up and not down. Or else you'll fall to the ground. It's the Life and Football Podcast. This is a new time. day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's Life and Football. This is a new day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life and football. It's life and football.